Hello everyone, what is going on? My name is Tim Peter. Welcome back to the TNT Podcast, episode 107. <laughs> um, we are finally here with the original crew. The OG trio. The, the unofficial fourth member ain't here, but that means that the three of us, including myself, Timpedia, and on my right... Uh, Friedman, also known as Andrew, but mostly known as Friedman. And on my left... Big to the anime. <laughs> <laughs> just Tyler. Right here. <coughs> Rudy. Damn, just right off the bat. Right off the bat. Yeah. The second you pause, Mike, he's going for the for the real title he's this week. <laughs> the real, the real title. The adjust glasses. Bring it around town. The cultural title. Yep. Bring it around town. You do this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this. Ah! Ah! Um. We right, actually have started. a lot of tiny ass news to talk about today. <laughs> um, I almost wonder if, like, when I do the timestamps, if I'm even going to split it all up. But for now, we'll go for it. Um, but starting off strongish, I guess. Uh, so there was no Assassin's Creed game last year. Isn't that insane to think? Weren't they like trying to figure out something new to do with the franchise or something? And lo and behold, we're going to Valhalla. Is this new? Would this technically be new? Why wouldn't it? I mean, yeah, it's not like, you know, you know, it's not like in a city probably or anything. Or it, it probably is. I, all right. I'll gra Granted, the trailer looked dope as hell. All right. Did you guys see the trailer? I did, actually. I've only seen memes of it, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, of course. Your, your you know preferred, method of, uh, <laughs> preferred method of media of consumption. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Like the the trailer seems really cool. I'm I like I'm interested. Don't get me wrong. But what I am concerned about is I am gonna spoil one thing if that's okay. Wait, isn't it from the trailer? Or are you talking about from another? It's game? from the trailer. Oh, yeah, then no, yeah, it's, it's the not trailer. a spoiler then. Uh, so the I haven't read anything online, but man, the guy at the end of the trailer, Tim, hmm. who shows up on the battlefield. And Dubro's like, Odin is with us. Tell me that dude did not look like Ezio. I mean, maybe, but in the other, I mean, it's also games? it's also like you like who the star he of like... uh, he's he's the whole reason Assassin's Creed is popular. He was the star of Two Brotherhood and Revelation. Yeah, he got his own. He got his own trilogy. He's yeah, basically okay. lightning. He's actually the, for the only, Assassin's Creed yeah, franchise. He's the okay. only main character who had more than one game. Yeah. That's, that's or, how... or sorry, let me rephrase. Let's rephrase that. He's the only character you dive into because there's the main there's the main oh, character well, yeah. of the actual story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the, the future the people. You... Yeah, I, I largely ignore that when yeah. I think about Assassin's well, Creed. Well, welcome to most people because <laughs> I think these later games have only really succeeded because they cut out a lot of that modern day shit that no one really cares about. Which I'm upset about. Like, uh, really? I'm not gonna get too much into it. Yeah, because you know what? I like so I like the first one. Uh, well, the first one's super dated. I would never play it again. But then, like, Dude, they really oh. brought it home. What the what? Could you? No, you just made me think of like, could you imagine if they Final Fantasy VII remaked Assassin's Creed One? <sighs> That'd be a waste of time. Really? Um, yeah, it's a waste of time. Really, you think so? I think so. Huh. I think there's just there's no point unless I they... feel like you just make a new entry in the franchise and that's like unless there's some like compelling story thing about Assassin's Creed One. Well, you it's really kind of cover. a history thing. I don't know. It's literally like they they did so much to this. If they really wanted to reboot, they missed their chance. They already did like a soft reboot with how the story was being told with Black Flag. So Whether it's... people really thought about it or not, it, that it really was. It marked. Black Flag was the mark of how they were going to start making these games right. moving forward. Because they clearly had a timeline and a plot with the original story, right? Mm -hmm. With, like, the first game. And then I don't know why they split up Ezio's thing into, like, three different parts, but they made that. Well, I think they went, oh, shit, we don't know what to do, so let's just do a holding pattern with Ezio right now. <laughs> they they might have. It, it really but didn't bro, make... don't fix it. Yeah, I I don't know. Everybody liked fucking I don't know the the weird like 
Two's great. Brotherhood. Yeah, that's also true. But two's great. Brotherhood is really good, and then Revelation is kind of eh. Revelation was kind of eh, and then three came out, and it's like, oh, that was it. Got three is the last more... one I played significantly. I liked it. There are some mixed reviews on it. I never even beat three. People liked Black Flag, but don't remember anything of the story. Me either. So here's the. Th- so we keep talking about Black Flag. If I was going to play... The thing about Valhalla is if I was going to play a new Assassin's Creed game, I think I'd finally play Black Flag because I have a copy that I have never put more than a half hour into. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Black Flag, I think, is great. In fact, I feel like they should have just taken out the whole... Because it's a main story. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a main story thing that has to do with the main story. And like I said, the way they set it up, I'm not going to say anything. It's a little bit convoluted and well, it is Isn't it the whole, like, anybody can do it now kind of thing? Uh, but there's a reason why. No, I know, but I, I don't, and I don't know that, but I just mean, like, they open it up because it's not Desmond anymore. Yeah, it's not Desmond anymore. Um, and it's, it's supposed to be you, the player, and you work for, um, the company or whatever. The bad boys. Yeah, the the Templars, I should say. The, the organization. Spoiler. Yeah, the organization, and uh, anyone can do it. They made it so they could like just mass produce it, pretty much, and like, right. just have people dive into these characters and have them investigate, like, you know, what their lives were like. Sorry, I didn't mean for us to dive into like all of Assassin's Creed. Um, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's not here a hot take on it's, it. It's like, relevant, but I mean, like. I think Valhalla looks cool, but like you actually mentioned, Tyler, they're like we thought three didn't have buildings or anything going on. Like, I haven't played the newer ones, but I don't know. Guess what? No one else has. The only people I know ah. play, I've, I know like one or two people who've played Origins and uh, whatever the fuck the new one is. I thought Origins sold really well. It did. Well, then I'm just saying, you... I don't have much... I oh, personally direct. don't have I gotcha. much to go on. Because I won't go off of what reviewers say. I like to hear what my friends say. That's fair. Because even if I have, like... Dr- like Even with you, I think I have some, like... Difference of opinions when it comes to certain things. Yeah. Like, we all like... What, what are you talking about? Same things. Huh? I said, what are you talking about? Yeah, right? Sarcastically. We've yeah, never exactly. had different takes on anything ever. We are three of the same voice. <laughs> <laughs> exactly all we are the hive it, mind uh, yeah we are uh what the fuck is it oh my we god we are the tnt podcast TNT. Yeah, TNT podcast. <laughs> but anyway i don't know i'm not gonna invest in anything until i see some gameplay that's how i how i've been well and that's how i'm gonna remain to i be. was gonna say i think there's reports that um well actually we're gonna okay we're going to skip into a new an, another story. I'm going to reorder this a little because this is directly relevant. Um, so apparently, well, th- this is kind of a different story, but it's tied to Valhalla. So apparently, Microsoft has made an announcement that they are going to start something called Xbox 2020, starting with their inside Xbox uh, on Thursday this week, where they are going to start giving big previews of what is going to happen with the Series X later this year. And the re- part of the reason this is related is because their first effort in this is to show the first Valhalla gameplay on their Inside Xbox show on Thursday. Oh, cool. Um, and it's not right... O- they're going to start with third-party stuff, but this is the same, like, this Xbox 2020 thing is going to be how part of this umbrella, whatever it is, is going to also be how they start revealing first party games and things that are coming to the Series X when it comes out this year. So what you're telling me is we're going to start having Microsoft Directs is what this is. Yeah, I mean, they already scary. have something that seems like it. They have this inside Xbox show that I think they do monthly, it said. in the Actually, let me open up the Xbox monthly updates on Series X. Uh, yeah, it's it's a program of monthly updates, and then the July episode is going to be first-party Xbox games. Um, okay, cool. They're also going to be at IGN Summer of Gaming in June as part of this, I think. And then, yeah, Inside Xbox is where this kicks off, and they'll probably give more details then. Uh, apparently, they are committed to bringing out Xbox Series X and Halo Infinite this holiday. Nice. So, I wonder if they're 
already in pre-production for these units because um, actually producing is going to be a problem for everyone this holiday season. That's why Sony already cut their expectations for how much they're going to sell. Yeah. Um, reading the cliff notes on IGN, apparently part of this announcement, they also confirmed that Halo Infinite will be day on release Xbox Game Pass for PC. Oh, nice. So can play G- Infinite day one, which is cool. I'm wondering if they let you transfer saves between PC and the Series X. Uh, I don't think they have that yet, but maybe we'll get there. I don't know. Fucking that would be killer. Um, but yeah, that's so I'm excited. As someone who's been happy with a lot of the stuff Microsoft's done lately, I'm I'm pretty pumped. Speaking of being pumped, though, oh boy, this is a spicy one. Um, I haven't heard of this. So this isn't. Uh, huge news or huge surprise or anything because apparently this crushed it as you would hope but apparently the creator of Castlevania has confirmed that season 4 is entering production at Netflix okay I wasn't sure this is a video game you were talking about or you're talking about season 4 here okay sorry I put Castlevania 4 I I realized the confusion I Um, figured it was the show but I didn't want to lead in like oh another season like nah it's coming out on Xbox One X I mean me and Tyler have talked about it but man this show like is all good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty spicy show. You know. You know what I'm saying. It's pretty. It's pretty fucking good. Um, I know some game fans are kind of sad that they seem to be taking this in, in sort of a direction of just worth keeping these characters for a long time instead of what game fans might have hoped. Where, Hashtag Final Fantasy like, VII remake. Like what? Tyler? Who gives? A well, no, no, no. I apparently, based on some of the people who've commented on other podcasts I listen to, um they were kind of hoping for like a season or two as each game in the mainline series. And then we time jumped to new, new characters and stuff. Oh, um, but the show is kind of doing its own thing and just sticking with Trevor and um, Alucard. And uh, oh my God, why can't I remember her What's name? What's her face? She's so cool, and I can't. Fuck. What's her face? Anyway, they're good characters. So, but like, but why though? Why would you get rid of them anyway? Well, no, I, I clearly that's what the showrunners agree with you, and I'm sure we're gonna have more of these guys, especially with how season three ended. Like, they, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, they have so much more development, especially, especially yeah. Alucard's. Oh my Holy god, shit. dude! <laughs> I need to see how that's gonna play out. I need to see. Yeah, so because this see... season Alucard did nothing but had a lot happen to him. <laughs> yeah, ex- but exactly because that that was an interesting character arc to see, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I really ooh, I need to see that reunion. Like watching it kind of felt bad, but then when you see the payoff, you're like, oh, now I want to oh, know what this my... is going to lead to. Did God. three end on a cliffhanger thing, or did it kind of like resolve it? And that's why people thought they weren't going to bring characters back. Well, I don't. Th- well, no, no, no. <laughs> Some that- definitely resolved. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure more of that talk was like when season two was done, because season two kind of ends, you know, or even when season yeah. like because season two, spoiler alert, they beat Dracula. Um, what? But there's so much more going on. But a lot of people probably were like, okay, season two could switch stories Could they be beat the ending, dracula yeah. we saw these people walk off and these people walk off and then season three i guess i'm sure put a lot of that to rest but i just remember hearing that talk um but yeah they they it's not a cliffhanger but there was a lot of sudden developments at the end that it's more like it's not like you're tense because there's some event about to happen but it's more like you can see an event like you we can see that a cliffhanger is coming at the end of next season <laughs> or like next season is going to be wild because of what happened this season so yeah it, it's not it's like we're not waiting to find out like does this person kill this person or something it's more like everyone has shifted and now we want to see how this plays out in another season but yeah i'm i'm so excited for this this is great i have to catch up unfortunately the time i usually dedicate to watching netflix shows is now back to playing video games Hell yeah yeah um, I'm sorry, Tyler. This will be real short and sweet for the two listeners who actually care about our magic content. Go to sleep. <laughs> but standard is ass right now, and Wizards knows it. So last year, I did a lot of you know kicking and screaming about this format historic, which was just all the cards that aren't in standard but are in Magic Arena. Um, 
and for the longest time it was like oh you can play it but there's literally zero rewards for it and the one time a year there's rewards for it it's only like that one month before a new set comes out when no one gives a shit mm-hmm. wizards is like okay you know we're gonna expand it now it's gonna be like a genuinely real format you can play it anytime you'll get your rewards whatever and it's i'm not i'm you can't convince me this isn't wizards realizing we were right when we complained like what are we supposed to do when standard is bad what are we supposed to play and now they're they figured out a way that it's not just this you don't spend any money you play with your old collection forever and now they have this system of adding new cards to it so that they themselves are curating the format so there's still a way for them to make revenue off it but if you are free to play player you can still thrive in this environment so it's a good thing but i don't know i really don't know what wizards is thinking behind the scenes i all i'm saying i on one hand i'm glad because i haven't played paper magic in over a month <laughs> Um, but like, I'm just glad I don't play any constructed formats. Cause I mean, I know it's high, I know it's hyperbole and I know it happens every single time, but companions seem to legitimately be driving every single constructed format crazy. Oh, I, I chat, I refreshed MTG goldfish's page on what the meta is today. And like, except for like team or reclamation, everything is a companion deck. Like Even if you don't fires? have one, you can't compete. Even fires, you What's either fires? run Karuga for the free card draw, you run oh, the right, it's a Karuga or you run an deck. eighty card deck and you run the one that lets you flicker all yes. your shit for value. Yorion and Karuga, yes. Yeah. Um apparently the in- I saw a retweet from Saffron Olive. Uh the entirety of the vintage top eight from the challenge this weekend was Luris decks. The entirety of vintage top eight had Luris as the companion. <laughs> God, this whole set is a big oof. <laughs> everything you know about what? this i feel like we've been saying that a lot since uh what's it called war a lot of people are yes. saying this on reddit nothing has been good since ravnica allegiances that was the last good set maybe i would say m20 was good but it brought us the disaster that's uh agent of treachery yeah but that card's not the problem that's, that's only a standard problem but that's but also that card's not a problem it's a seven drop Yes, the it's, rest, it's everything the rest around it that makes it a big problem. <laughs> yeah, there's just been a lot of high power sets that are just disgustingly broken. It just like Wizards made this big stink about how like we have a playtest team filled with former pros, but they're on their like fourth miss in a row. Well, is it miss or are they just trying to power up and drive things nuts? I don't know. Like none of them thought to use Oko's plus one on another person's oh, creatures. Stop! No. <laughs> oh, that line hurts to remember. Yeah. Oko McBroco. Anyway, but McBroco. that's all from Magic. We're we're seeing Wizards in this weird phase where like I think Mark Rosewater had an interview with um the professor last week where he's like, you know, Magic Digital is a big source of revenue, but it, it doesn't come close to paper even right now. So like paper's still their primary Wait, focus. Really? Yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's they still make most of their money shocking. worldwide on paper. Wow. Um But what what am I trying to say here? They're really concerned now because they still can't sell their new set. So they like they yeah. need to prop up Arena as much as they can in the summer because they don't know when they're going to be able to start straight up selling cardboard again. Yeah. Yeah. Strange times. Yeah. Anyway. But back. But now, for the first time in a million years, we can actually transition from one usual topic to another. Oh yeah, I want to talk about Overdang very, very smallly, minimally. Very, I don't know what the adjective I'm looking for here is. Um, but there's, you know, usually the community screaming that the sky is falling. And usually Luigi's a good indicator if the sky is actually falling or not. <laughs> he still plays this game. Um, but he does a play a lot. Ago, Didn't he just get diamond? I don't know what the ranks are, but I, I feel like he said so. the word diamond. Yeah, because I think he was stuck in gold for an eternity. Yes, I do remember that. Which, which I can't um, I can't sympathize with because I was so proud when I reached gold the first time <laughs> and then stopped playing competitive. Um <laughs> But their way of balancing, because they realize everyone's getting too tired of stale metas because they weren't going to be releasing a lot of characters before Overwatch 2 comes out supposedly later this year. They introduced hero pools. And the way they balanced it week to week was whoever the two most played characters in a given role were, were banned for the next week. But they found a lot of it was just bouncing back and forth between the same like four characters getting banned. Or in the event that they added a new character, that character immediately got banned next week because everyone wanted to play them. Um, and they realized <laughs> that... The, the bans weren't helping a lot of the lower lower skill level players. What they decided to do is, uh, from the next patch on, the the hero pools are only going to affect like the highest levels of competitive play, and they're only going to use Overwatch League data to figure out who was the most played characters. So 
they've kind of refined that. Um, is Owl even playing right now? Uh, they still are. They're just not like in arenas anymore. Right. No, totally. I mean, League's doing the same thing. I just didn't know yeah. if they were because like yeah, League there's... is between splits right now. Yeah, they're still going. Uh, a big controversy is that the MVP of every season gets a like skin available in the cash shop. But last last season's MVP just announced he's quitting Overwatch <laughs> to go play Valorant exclusively. <laughs> So there was a stir in the community, like should they, should they even release the skin? It's like yeah, just because someone reti- like like just because a like a baseball player retires doesn't mean you like burn all their MVP shit because they're not playing uh, anymore. Like, you do it out of spite. Come on. If I they will switch- say, remember all that. Not to bring it up, but remember all that. Who is it? Like LeBron when he left. Uh, yes. Yes, major salt. Cleveland and there was like salted the earth shit. Oh my god, that to, was hilarious. We mean when he. Went into the forever box. <laughs> oh, no, that anyway. was Kobe. I was going to say, wait, Kobe. I, I don't like, know basketball. I don't remember is oh, someone from Cleveland. I, I was like, pretty, is this some basketball slang I don't know of that refers to when someone goes to the Lakers or something? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the forever box. No, anyway. I, I fucked up my basketball shit. My bad. Point is, I don't remember who the dude that got MVP the first season they made that octopus Zenyatta skin for. But I remember that Octopus Zenyatta skin. And I a lot of these content creators really overplay how important the Overwatch League is to the average player in the game. So <laughs> Well, now I it's overall, um, not important at all. This is good for casual. I think I'm listening to a lot of what people are saying, and it seems like the Discord on Overwatch 2 is no one wants to pay for a PvE game in 2020, which I think is a very strange sentiment mm. among like blizzard fans given that everyone wants these huge cinematic experiences and there's no such thing as a cinematic pvp game <laughs> i don't know uh but that's probably the last thing i'm going to talk about for overwatch till overwatch 2 gets shown off you say that yeah i do say that <laughs> do i mean it i don't know but i said it i feel like we haven't anyway. talked about valorant a lot but there's been a lot of stuff about f- people like bouncing between valorant and csgo and overwatch and it just feels like it's all really over like going oh i nuts. asked my my old csgo clan about it the other day because they were they're they're like kind of anticipated new guild wars 2 expansion so they jumped in and we were just chatting for a couple hours and i asked them like what do they think of it and they said it just feels like cs but everyone has everyone has smoke grenade abilities was how they described it hmm. um someone said it's it's too slow which that was weird because they all play counter-strike but they're just like yeah Wait, man did we Valorant we, no, no, we no, talk we talked about, about it, it, but it's but just... I'm just saying what my professional grade CSGO <laughs> players think of it. I just feel like it's it's an evolving thing, and I, I don't know, like I feel like I saw a bunch of posts on Reddit get to the top of like people talking about Valorant and like switching or yeah, their sub is pro. super active right yeah. now. So anyway, we'll we'll see. It, might be, it might just be Riot propping the whole thing up. Speaking of. Uh, propping it up well, i don't know that doesn't really work but speaking of right, being so, depressing depressing so what's news, this about so this is not this is unhappy times so yeah this is doom eternal comes out a while ago when mommy and, and daddy are fighting <sighs> <laughs> so doom eternal comes out and the soundtrack is not at release and it's only included with the collector's edition of the game what was it like a week or two ago the soundtrack comes out and everyone says what the hell these songs are mixed like garbage so mick gordon comes out and says i only mixed like 10 tracks on this 12 or something i forget on like this 50 song soundtrack i only mixed like 10 so everyone up online because the internet always does this started flaming the shit out of id bethesda and the lead sound designer or whoever is the one who did the most of the mixing on this. And everyone was like, oh my God. Uh, Cause Mick had said things like he didn't have, or like Bethesda didn't let him work on it or something, or he didn't get the time or something. I, I forget what he said, but basically he said uh, it's Bethesda's fault. And I'm probably never going to work with Bethesda again. Just Ouch. yesterday or the day before, um, Marty Stratton, who's actually in a lot of the Doom promotional material, he's the guy who was up on stage with um, Hugo Martin, the guy who me and Tyler talk about as having watched his interview and liking it. Um, He's like the executive producer or something like that. He posts 
I don't know if he only posted it to Reddit, but I saw it on Reddit. He posted this, like, pages-long open letter to the community about the situation. And he basically said, actually, um, McGordon was hard to work with and didn't keep to timelines and it is not a good relationship and we will not be bringing him back for DLC for this game. Damn. So, uh, and he also yeah. was like, you know, everyone's a real, he basically was like, yo, you're all pieces of shit for flaming this, this, the, the things being thrown at this lead sound designer are disgusting, which of course they are. Cause it's the fucking internet. Um, but yeah. So he basically came out and was like, and threw it right back at Mick and was like, no, this is this is him. He didn't get things done on the timetable we needed. And Aiden showed up just as we're talking about the Doom Eternal soundtrack situation. Uh, hi. <laughs> Welcome just, to party. You sound just, excited to be here. I came home and I touched my bed and instantly died. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here. We're good. We're so, good. We're okay. All right. Aiden, would you... <laughs> Aiden, are you able to see the show notes? Ah, uh, yeah. Give me, give me one second. We'll, Sorry. we'll, we'll let you catch up and offer your opinion on all the stuff that, that we've covered so far. But yeah, so oh, that's the Doom God. Eternal soundtrack situation. As far as I know, Mick hasn't said anything in regards to the open letter. Um, but a lot of websites reported it as a headline of like, oh, they f- shot back, and it's a, it's more than a couple tweets. I'll say that much because Mick had like what was it Tyler? maybe like five tweets that i saw screenshots of float, floating yeah. around this is like i was scrolling through the letter on reddit after reading the first paragraph so i'm just like jesus <laughs> this is a novel <laughs> so i did not read it all but i did uh read some tldrs and stuff so i love throwing around the meme about heated gamer moments but this is the best thing i can or the closest thing i can call to a heater game a heated game dev moment yeah so it's 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 frustrating because everyone does love mixed music, but then, I mean, this doesn't sound ridiculous that, like, it is, like, actually he just sucked at meeting deadlines and it was a huge problem working with him. Like, I don't know. It, it feels bad, I mean, man. you just fire back with the famous phrase, you can't rush art. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Aiden, now that you're in the show notes, you got anything about any of this? All right. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, probably the first fucking Assassin's Creed game I've had any interest in since forever. <laughs> well, looking forward to that. Uh, it was a great trailer. I uh, thought it was really cool. Hopefully they, like, maybe improve the game a little you, bit more. Do you actually remember <laughs> the last one you played significantly or beat? Four. Black Flag. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's funny you say that because Black Flag came up a lot during our discussion. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That, that, I I would consider that the one of the last decent Assassin's Creed games. Okay. Uh, I own Unity, and I will probably play through that at some point, just because I got it for free. Same with me saying I have Black Flag and Unity. I never beat it. Oh yeah. man, I never actually played Anthem after installing it. Oh no! <laughs> Why did you install it? Because it came free with my graphics card. Oh, oh right, Christ. I forgot. <laughs> Oh, what are we should have gotten a do? discount with for the graphics card for taking I know. <laughs> big, big <laughs> money. Honestly. Uh that but yeah, looking forward to the Assassin's Creed. Uh I, I the the Norse mythology is making a, a uh big a comeback huge showing in popular <laughs> uh popular culture here. Thanks, Cross. Yeah, I watched I watched Venom last year. I'm, I'm oh. good to you. <laughs> I, I started watching Vinland saga last night. Oh shit. But oh, I wow. was so fucking tired, I didn't realize that there were no subtitles. So I watched the entire first episode and have no idea what happened. Jesus Wait, <laughs> like you didn't watch it dubbed, you just watched it with a language you didn't understand. Yep, and, and was got... perfectly okay with it. I was just so out. <laughs> Hold on, he might be ascending to the next level of Wii where you just understand context clues. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's... uh. It looks great, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will I will actually start that show tonight because uh, it was it was really cool. I like the visual style of it, and so far from what I've gathered, I will probably like the plot and theme as well. 
Okay. Um, not sure what Xbox 2020 is. So apparently Microsoft announced today that they're going to start monthly announcements and like video streams maybe even about everything coming to Series X in the fall. And this first one said they're going to have – the first one is Insider Xbox on Thursday. They're going to mm-hmm. show Valhalla gameplay, and they confirmed that uh, Halo Infinite is going to come day of release to uh, Game Pass for PC. Oh. Oh, my. <laughs> Well, that's nice. <laughs> uh, all right, that's cool. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I mean, the more information we have out there, the more... Uh, yeah, apparently cool. in July, they're going to talk about all their first-party stuff coming. I'm That I'm interested in seeing, because how they're going to handle with... Pers- uh, with How they're going to handle first-party with uh, the Series X coming out. I think is going to be interesting and i think it'll probably Can, be the model that we see moving forward as far as like considering console. how little we've seen out of microsoft for a while now in terms of first party yeah yeah exactly i mean they they've had a horrible showing this console generation it's like everything it's like the opposite of the nintendo problem where everything microsoft does that isn't a game like game pass and everything goes great yeah but, but all their games are just not happening or not good <laughs> Yep. Not good. Uh, Castlevania Four, all about it. I don't care what it, what Castlevania it is. <laughs> I'm just cool with more Castlevania. Castlevania is fucking great. It's the show. Yep. Good okay. stuff. Well, because Freeman Loving didn't know it was the show. <laughs> but you know well, what? I'm sure there was a new game. Right? Maybe it's time for a new game. <laughs> hmm? I mean, what do you think uh, about that, Castlevania? Konami Yo, and video games? They don't right. they don't do games here. I I they don't I, do I, video I, games. What's a video game? We got <laughs> pachinko machines. Yeah. We got those. That's it, yeah. Uh let's see. Magic the Gathering Arena. Don't, don't worry care. about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Overwatch. Hero pools move to higher competitive ranks only. Oh, thank fuck for that. <laughs> Actually, thank fuck for that. I've been trying to play Overwatch competitive with some people. And like, thank God, actually, um, I, I think I think them putting restrictions on like lower level competitive play and 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 in quick play has been a huge detriment to the game. Yeah, they realize that, and they're like, we only really need this to balance high level. We don't care what happens at the yeah. low level of play. Yeah, it's this is this is more more Blizzard like not understanding that hey, you need to stop balancing the whole game around what fucking 0.001% of the player base is doing. Although one interesting thing I didn't bring it up is for the first time ever, I think Widowmaker's on the ban list this week and no one will shut up about how much more fun the game is without Widowmaker in the game. Eh, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, hey, you know, sniper, generic sniper. Yeah. We can do without snipers. Um, I mean, good on them. I, I, think that, I think that's a big... That'll be a big improvement to Overwatch, honestly, because like, like did we did we already didn't need that, and I, I, I really I wish they would do the same thing with roll queues. What just undo it? Uh, either either undo it or move it to like literally the, only the highest tier of play. Uh, because I feel it, you, but at the same time, I it. I hated solo healing so much. Oh, that's fair, you know, and it's it's a difficult that's i understand why that's a little bit more of a contentious point but it's like they have generated a problem that didn't need to exist and it's a yeah. it's a similar problem that they have in world of warcraft actually where if you pick it like if you want to play a dps which is 80 percent of the people that play the game you might as well just like it, like get home queue up and then go cook fucking dinner because by the time you're done eating you might have a queue pop <laughs> gotcha. like the queues are just insanely long and I, I mean I, I that's probably fine for competitive but like if you're just trying to play quick play like why oh you're waiting like a 10 minute queue for dps yeah yeah exactly I mean, if they want to keep it for competitive, I totally get that. But at least get rid of it for quick play. I mean, they yeah. always, they have the option for quick play, classic, and arcade. So I guess that's fine. But I don't know. I have an issue with roll queues just personally. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, that definitely has its problems. 
Yeah, uh, I didn't actually finish the Doom open letter thing. I saw the post and I started reading it, didn't get through it all. I though. mean, I didn't read the whole thing. It was more just I read a TLDR. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, rip. <laughs> rip Mick Gordon. <laughs> Damn. Uh, rip Mick Gordon. I, I think it is. Uh, I think I don't know. Safe to say that this is done. Yeah. Sadly. <laughs> Well, it's like, it's like a bad breakup. No, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. At least we got some good music out of it while we could. At and least ha- we got BFG division. Good. <laughs> yes, this is true. <laughs> well, well, we had that BFG four division. years ago. And God damn it, if... 100% if, worth it. I, if we don't have, like, 20 fucking studios trying to pick up Mick Gordon for their soundtrack, I'm going to be real upset. I don't know, dude. At the same time, this open letter from id was pretty damning in terms of like describing working with him i wouldn't be surprised if there's at least some people who go i don't know bethesda seemed to have a lot of trouble with him but i don't know i'm sure i'm sure he'll have work i'm sure that went both ways though totally but also like like i was saying at the same time how many people love the shit out of his music like he's one of the biggest names in game music right now you're gonna hire him yeah, exactly. And, and you know what, though? Yeah, like, so was Martin O'Donnell. Yeah. <laughs> Look where he's at. <laughs> what is he Who? doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing! He ain't oh, okay. doing shit! Yeah, but didn't he, like, choose to stop or something? I don't know. There's no way he know. intentionally... Or, like, there's no way he accidentally stopped making music. Hey, man, if your main squeeze said, go fuck yourself after a long... Wait, we don't actually have that news on the list. <laughs> What? So speaking of Marty O'Donnell. Oh. Ba, 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 ba. Hey. Ba, 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 ba. So yeah. Halo 2, baby. Let's guess go. Guess, guess, guess what Let's Play is returning next week. <laughs> On the 12th to be exact. Oh, so excited. Wait. Literally a week no. from today. So no, podcast weird. canceled. Probably. Podcast canceled, podcast baby. Podcast almost definitely canceled. No, it's Me and it's, Tyler are going to be almost. freaking out. It, no, there is no almost here. There is no almost. There just is. So for those who are confused, uh, it was announced today, shortly before the podcast, actually, that Halo 2 is coming to the Master Chief Collection a week from today. You're... Thank God. <laughs> we needed some good news, and this was <laughs> it. Dude, uh, so honestly... How many people I feel like John Krasinski in his own show? I feel like there has to be some percentage of people who stop playing Call of Duty to switch back to Halo when two comes to multiplayer. It's not going to be for long. No, but you're going to do it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Tyler's going to be top of the charts in like three weeks on Halo 2. No question. Here we go. Let's fucking go. Burp, 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 burp. Fucking oh, one of you running motherfuckers no, on I'm, midship. I'm honestly oh excited because not only are me and Tyler gonna actually do the LP, um, but I am actually excited to finally play multiplayer with you guys. Uh, because like I said, I never did play this game's multiplayer as much as it's Tyler's literal favorite ever. I never oh, played this one on Xbox Live, so it'll be a neat a neat change of pace. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm going to be quoting the shit out of this game. Not during the cutscenes, because that's BM, and they're fucking gorgeous. <laughs> I can't. Dude, I'm so glad I've only seen, like, clips or, like, the first few. I've never seen the whole game together. I I can't wait to finally see what Blur Studios did to this game. It's a, it's a fucking amazing. Dude, can Microsoft just acquire them to make video game cinematics from now on? Dude, they should have just kept them on for the rest of their Halo games. <laughs> I probably would pl- I'd probably play them. Or maybe I wouldn't play them. I'm not going to lie. I'd probably just watch them on YouTube. But that's beside the point. <laughs> I mean, Fuck they're me. just they're so good. Ever since the uh the Knights of the Old, the the, uh, the Old Republic trailers that looked so fucking good. I've just like they are such masters. When you first saw Halo, were you blinded by its majesty? <laughs> blinded? Never lied. Dumbstruck. God, so good. <laughs> I love it. Um, He's going to regret bringing his raggedy ass fleet. Hoorah! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I can't wait. Since I only did the first mission on Legendary back on Xbox, I can't wait to actually play through this entire game. On, 
I mean, it's going to be horrible. We're going to die a billion times. But... We're going to die a lot because none of, neither one of us can die because one person yep. dies. Everything gets re reset. Because this game has the worst co-op mechanics for Legendary ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's coming next week, and we're definitely going to be doing that, that day one. Like It's going to happen. Um, it's, it's happening. Speaking of it's happening, uh, this game hasn't had news for a while, but F Jedi Fallen Order. Man, who thought? Who remembered that that game existed? Um, apparently, it seemed cool for a minute. Yeah, well, it it should it might be cool again for a little bit. Uh, it got some free DLC for May the Fourth, along with I'm sure other Star. Well, actually, we are gonna have one other Star oh, Wars oh, news. May but... the Fourth be with you. Ha, ha. Oh, God, I heard that so many times <laughs> yesterday. Um, I'll say how many people fucking told you that stop, yesterday? Stop! Don't even. I don't need this. <laughs> I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> this is personal i mean <laughs> you did this so. i know um but anyway it doesn't add a ton but apparently they added little combat challenge arenas throughout the game um there's also more uh cosmetic stuff probably lightsaber options and clothes options i don't know um and then there's also new game plus mode which is literally nothing i don't th as far as it describes on IGN, there's nothing new. It's literally just start the game over with all your stuff. Um, and then minor other stuff, like neat little stuff, but nothing super crazy, but it's still cool to get a bunch of new content in this game. Getting New Game Plus is sweet. Um, but this game didn't really have enough to be like, I need to go replay it again on New Game Plus, but it's still neat. Yeah, I think it's just an annoying trend that games are doing now too, where it's like, all right, guys, here's the game, and it's like it's like an RPG where you level up and have abilities and cosmetics, and then they're like, all right, no new game plus though. And then like yeah. three months later, after everybody's done yeah. with the game and nobody cares anymore, they're like, hey guys, new game plus. Like, no, you should have given <laughs> did, that to me from the very beginning. Did Stop. Witcher three? <laughs> No, Witcher Three didn't did at not. launch. Witcher Three did not have at um, launch new game plus. New game plus at launch. Wait, it has now. Fortunately, it does yes, now. it does yeah. have now. Fortunately for them, that game's like a hundred and thirty yeah. fucking hours long. So <laughs> I was gonna say were the psycho playing it. Well, also the psychopaths <laughs> were were more than happy to boot it back up after all that time. Absolutely, and oh, I'm yeah. one of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Actually, not no, sorry. I'm not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. I'm not sorry at all. Even all of it. <laughs> I still have not played through Blood and Wine. Oh my god! Piece of shit. <laughs> Blood and Wine is I literally like... some of the best content in that fucking game. I have like 200 hours in it too, <laughs> and I what haven't even touched Blood and Wine. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I'll get there eventually. I mean, don't I'll worry. catch up to those hours when I replay the game to show it to Val, but like. Yeah, I've beaten mean, the fucking. You saw already all the important parts, anyway. That's fair. Um, <laughs> but we did get some other Star Wars news yesterday that was kind of neat. Um, obviously nothing's happening for a long time because everything doesn't exist. But your boy Taika, Taika Waititi, uh, uh, Hitler, apparently was picked up to co-write and direct. Like, sorry, like direct by himself and co-write a upcoming Star Wars movie. This was the project that D and D were supposed to originally. Is it really? I didn't know that. I think this was this was the movie project. It may not be the same like subject matter, can, but can we talk about a U turn in terms of writer quality? <laughs> it it was oh, one shit. year ago this Sunday that we got the. Uh, Stop. Daenerys just kind of forgot about the Iron Fleet. Uh, damn, damn, Dude, damn, I saw damn, that damn, on Reddit. Damn, damn. Oh my god. <laughs> Damn, has it already been a year? Yes. Fuck, dude. Yeah. What a what a fucking incredible thing to witness, though. Man, this last quarter of the fucking the 2010s Just were terrible. The death of one of the most iconic pop culture phenomenon in, in like quite some time. Yeah. I, and like over the course of like a month, it's just gone. <laughs> I don't even know if it was a month. More like two or three it, weeks it was probably two or three weeks it probably didn't even can, make it a month long can you guys think of anything like this that's happened what where it's like like shitty? just complete collapse well like i don't think i've ever seen a show with a bad last season go into it with that level of hype like most shows going yeah. into the last season like it's already on a downward trend yeah at least in terms of viewership not necessarily writing quality but like 
it was very unique. Like I was like I was in London on vacation when this episode came out. My brother and I like were not getting spoiled, so we set aside an hour in the middle of the day, like before we went out for dinner, was to just go back to the hotel, watch Game of Thrones, and then go do something else. And it left such a sour taste on that vacation. Damn. I. Yeah. It's such a. It was such a good show too, mm-hmm. up until like that point, basically. And it's like now, now you can't even go back and watch watch it again because, because it it's the just, so yeah. Oh, awful. Up, yeah. So I was trying to think of shows that declined. Like The Office went down in quality, but the finale is good, and it's not that bad. And you can still like that Parks and Rec and How I Met Your Mother are all yeah, shows. Yeah, I was gonna throw out Mother because that was the that hurt that, me personally. That's the one that everyone goes. The finale fucking sucks, but that show is so just kind of me and like it single contained episodes that it's like Val's sisters are rewatching a bunch of how I met your mother right now. And it's still funny to watch those old episodes. And it's, I, sometimes I throw in like the ha ha, but Robin's the mom. Ha ha. Um, but like, <laughs> damn, but, but it's still, you can still watch it and enjoy it. Like game of Thrones is so story focused that when the story just dies, you can't go back and put yourself in that mindset ever again. I don't. I really don't think there's anything like that where the story itself died and made the old stuff retroactively so much worse. That's the thing. Like some, like How I Met Your Mother ended badly, or Dexter. Maybe Dexter is the closest. I was, was going to bring up Dexter, but the thing about Dexter is, I I will go. I've gone back and rewatched with people, and because at least the first four seasons of Dexter are very self-contained stories okay that's fair. it's fine to watch those seasons on their own like i don't know the rest of the show yeah because my dad and brother watched it i never did but they both i remember were like oh god fuck that ending but i mean i would still gladly watch any of the first four seasons again. okay well there you go then it doesn't remember apply to that either in, uh, remember back in season two where we got that that first little hook on the uh azora high uh plot line <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Yo, are you know what? It's fine because HBO can redeem themselves. Okay, they can right. make the prequel. No, the no, one no. that we've been talking about. Absolutely. No, we just need more seasons of Westworld. Do you think any of those projects are in danger because of how badly? Absolutely. Received? Yes. Very. One hundred percent. We watched a dynasty die in front of our eyes on no, live television. I, look, I ain't disagreeing. I just wanted to see what your guys' thoughts was because. That, like big companies don't tend to just drop things like hot potatoes like that. Like how many series yeah. like were continued even though they had downward spirals. Like people said, the office got bad when Michael left. That was in the middle of season six. And generally, that happens with sitcoms. It's just a sure, thing. but I, I that's the easiest example I can go to. But that petered along for seasons, like. This just, like, I feel like there might have been so much pre-work because no one expected season eight to crash so hard that it's harder for them to just give up on it, but I don't know. Anyway, I don't know the reason we got into this topic is they're making another Star Wars movie. Yes. Immediately (laughs) after saying, we're not going to make a Star Wars movie for a while. So... (sighs) Hopefully they have something good worth telling. Because you know, if, if they said we're not doing any new Star Wars shit after Star Wars Nine and we didn't get Mandalorian, in retrospect, I would have been mad. Like, if you have a story worth telling, go for it. If I you think Star Wars is still Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars is still worth exploring. Yeah, I mean Star Wars. As as someone who has not and probably hopefully will not ever watch Rise of Skywalker, I still want to see Star Wars things. I pay yeah. to watch you get I angry agree. watching Rise of Skywalker, though. I'm Oof. getting a little tired. I'm not gonna in general, lie. or of Star Wars. In general, Star Wars, oh. like it's, it's well, cool yes, stuff, but oh, I'm like, totally. Eh. Like it's starting to feel like the uh, like the whole zombie craze, where it's like it's oh, been it's, going on. There's so much of it, you're just disinterested. I think Disney yeah. figured that out, though. It was there was it was just oversaturation. You know what would have helped. If there was more good video games, damn. Yeah, speaking probably. of it, no, I'm, not, I'm not starting that again. But, um, yeah, but, you should do. But Tyler, I hope, I hope you're only tired of space or Star Wars and not space, because. Oh, well, I want it. I, we're going to space. What the fuck? I don't know what this is. I saw. Gonna, what is going? So, on? making business moves here. So, God 
Damn Tom it. Cruise and Elon Musk are teaming up with NASA to shoot the first ever action narrative movie in space. Oh, Jesus Christ. So before, before you guys all start knocking it, I just want to remind everyone, Apollo 13 was shot inside NASA's like zero-gravity simulation planes. You mean just Apollo an airplane? 13, yes, and Apollo 13 was a great movie, so don't knock it until No, I don't, I don't, dude, I don't, I'm no, actually, it's just the idea. It wasn't aimed at you, Tim. It was aimed at the other two. No, I know, but I, I honestly think this is, whether or not this is good, this is going to be fascinating. Oh, yeah. I want to hear more about this. This is a first ever. Like, this is, I, I want to see us do things more, do things more in space as a society. Filming a movie in space is getting us there. I was almost, I see, I'd be impressed if, like, Pornhub didn't like already <laughs> try that a couple weeks, uh, like not a couple weeks, a couple years ago. Wait, what? They tried yeah, to film know that. They tried to gravity. film porn in space. Turns out it, it doesn't work well. Well, of course it doesn't, it doesn't work, but they also didn't get the funding. Well, then there you go. Tom Cruise. Yeah, man. They're Tom trying Cruise to crowdfund pays, fund that shit. Tom Cruise pays for all these fucking uh, Mission Impossible movies. You know they're yeah. already. You know his next project before this is going to be two more Mission Impossible movies. God damn it. Clearly these missions are all entirely possible. <laughs> God, fuck you. God damn it. Dude, Tom Cruise is getting so old so that he can't move as well. What's the solution? Go to space. You can be an action star in space all over again. When There's zero no gravity. gravity. I can go back to doing my own stunts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I honestly would... I don't know if I'd... Hmm, I don't know if I'd pay to see this. I'd need to actually see what the hell it would look like. But honestly, I, want, I need to know the premise. I'm just thrilled to think that this might exist in my lifetime. A movie shot in outer space. That's that just sounds so cool. Can we just get someone else? <laughs> I uh, <laughs> like Tom Cruise only works in so many movies. Dude, I'm that, still waiting for I'm still waiting for Edge of Tomorrow two to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Promised us a that, sequel. Everyone wants it, movie... but it's not going to happen. The movie didn't need a sequel. The cult classics, yeah, that's also true, but the cult classics never get the sequel. Yeah. Well, I want a collateral sequel. No, I'm just kidding. I don't want a collateral sequel. We're getting a Top Gun <laughs> sequel, though. That's his, That's the next one coming out. Unfortunately, I have to see it. I'm obligated to see it. Why? Because <laughs> Top Gun was good. Because fucking Top Gun, dude. Come okay. on. I, well, I didn't know if you... Come was... on, Tim. I'll be your okay. wingman anytime. <laughs> I didn't know if there Come was on. something more specific than just fucking <laughs> Top Gun. <laughs> fucking Top Gun. That's it. Oh my god. Maybe it's secretly another Top Gun movie. Top Gun 3 oh, Space get Top the Gun. Fuck out of yep. Here. Oh my there god. we go. <laughs> oh god. You know, Tom actually, Cruise, though, Elon Musk, be... NASA, and Space Force are going to work together to shoot Top Gun as. Oh no. <laughs> that would be a. Honestly, that'd probably be a lot better plot for Top Gun 2 than what they have going on right now. Who even. Uh... <sighs> Let's wait for Maverick to come out. I don't even know what Maverick is supposed to be about. Yeah, it's, it's just but, I don't old. know. It, it's just he's old, and they're like, "Yo, why are you still? Why are you still <laughs> flying planes, huh, you old fuck? You should be doing other shit." And he's like, "Oh, I love flying planes. Planes go, planes go burr." <laughs> oh my god! That's oh it. god! That's the concept of Maverick. That's planes it. go burr. <laughs> planes go burr. Fucking meme lords. <laughs> oh. Speaking of meme lords, Tyler's ready to meme lord the shit out of this game. Oh, hold on. Since we're on Cyberpunk, did you guys hear about what they said about their... I didn't like, even get to... Yeah, we don't... We so don't before fuck you around, talk right? about the actual news, they had an interview about the um, the like, the like content rating they're getting in Europe. And it was something like the like the highest under... Like, there's pornographic content, and there's whatever's below that. No, in they, Brazil. They got that in Australia. Australia. And their official statement Australia? on it was... Their official statement on it was, we don't give a fuck. Well, apparently... Yeah. That's their actual statement regarding fun, it. Fun fact, the, the guy who posted that was the same dude who designed the uh, the Baron mission in, oh, uh, yes. in The Witcher 3. Fantastic. Um, well, I don't know what you saw about Brazil. I saw that Australia rated yeah, this, rating this Australia, like then. NC18+. <laughs> there you yeah, go. Dude. Oh, so you can't buy this in Australia, then? No, you can't. <laughs> What do you mean? You just gotta be eighteen plus and find a store that carries it. It's basically yeah. 
I will send my friend a copy. Yo, why don't we paradrop some copies into Australia? <laughs> Yeah, well, yo, no, for go, real. Sam. This is a game that needs to be shared with the world. <laughs> no, unfortunately, there. We won't like, let they're... your government do this. Australia will save you. <laughs> we're good. We're good at fucking up our government. All right. <laughs> so all this we got is. Your back. So this is very Magic: The Gathering of them to announce an announcement coming June 11th. Something called oh, Night God. City Wire, which I saw a hilarious take on, which was just a picture of a braided USB cord with colors that said, and with yellow on it, and it said Cyberpunk Nightwire. Hell yeah, let's fucking go. I'd be okay with it. Um, <laughs> it's better than Beep, all right? <laughs> Yo, fuck you, I love my hat. All we gotta do is wait a month, and then we finally get some, I would, this has to be like gameplay, right? I'm really uh, hoping. Probably. I mean, how many times are they going to state that the game is in a is in like a finished state? What's it, the current called... release date? September. I mean, the game was September. supposed to have come out two weeks ago. Yeah, there have there has to be at least at least a section of the game that's fully finished. They're ready. No, it to show has on, to be done. Given that it was supposed to come out, like even if they were like deciding we're going to redo the physics engine or no, some no, no, nonsense no. like that. Well, yeah, they've but... got to have something worth showing off at this well, point. Well, I was going to say like. We're past the point where they could have said if they were going to delay the game again, they would have said Corona delayed them. Yeah. They have to know by now if they're going to hit that release date. It's they can't not know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it would take yeah, such a I, fundamental I believe, issue. I believe CD Projekt Red was pro. They were probably like pretty close to being done to have the, to be. have yeah. the date when it was. Like, because they're not the type of company to just be like, okay, we're releasing here. And they said it like two years ago, and then we get there, and it's like, ah, we fucked up, blah, 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 blah. They I don't mean, do that, generally. There's even a possibility like, they delayed the game just for polish, and uh, maybe multiplayer is super far out, and they wanted time to get that closer. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons, but there's like, something. They've, yeah. they've said it multiple times that they're, it's like, it is a completely playable game. They're just, they're buffing the edges, basically. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah, look forward to that news gameplay. in five weeks, I believe. But yeah, we're, I'm sure we're all going to be watching said live stream no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of more, a game that's already out, though, the last thing, oh, this is, Oh no, never mind. It's not the last thing. You know what? We're gonna switch to this so that we can keep all that Japanese Japanimation stuff together. Um, Japanimation. So coming off of the crazy news of Tom Cruise in space, we have other crazy television news. Um, I know probably none of you have still watched Tiger King, uh, but nope. everyone knows who Joe Exotic is at this point. Oh, and we're we're flipping around the order here. Yeah, I fl I've moved it real quick. Uh, apparently. Nicholas Cage has been grabbed for a uh, narrative-based television show to play Joe Exotic. Oh, good lord! Dude, I fucking can't, man. Like, oh, fuck why? <laughs> does it why? really? Does this really need to happen? It already uh, happened in real so life. We don't maybe. need more of this. So yeah, that's the thing. I, I think on its own, no one needed more of this. But with Nicholas Cage, hell yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine no, if they built? No, we don't yes. need this. Totally do. No, see, this is my problem. Okay, no, I have a huge oh, problem with this. You're telling me? Oh, we... he's actually upset. I am upset. <laughs> We're wasting our fucking money and time on some bullshit like this. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Nicholas no, Cage. No, fuck you, Nick, Tim. I Nick hate Cage. This. Nick Cage hasn't really done anything care. major in like a decade. I, I don't care. He's got like, the time. Being spent on something hold stupid. On. I've seen this one before. So <laughs> this ha no, no. So this is already it face happened. Off? No, face it's off. the fucking fire festival. So after after that <laughs> giant scam of fire festival happened, someone made a documentary, and then everyone is like, "Oh fuck!" Everyone's watching this documentary. Let's also make our own documentaries about this using various actors to reenact it. And it was like Hulu did it, Amazon did it, Netflix did it, and they all covered this stupid fucking music festival that almost got four people killed. And now they're doing it again. There's some weird freak content that isn't really exclusively licensed to anyone that everyone can attempt to do their own version of, and this is them latching onto it. But Nicolas Cage wasn't in that, though. Look, I understand <laughs> that, but it fits the bill. <laughs> this needs to fucking die in a oh, fire. I'm grab He's some water right. real quick. He's I just, absolutely right. I'm I, not happy. I just think if Nicolas Cage is the first grab, if they could put together a good enough cast, I think a cast could launch this on its own. I see. 
I mean, maybe. No, nah, you but... know what? Nah, it's I'm pissed. Like... I'm, I'm legitimately <laughs> angry. <laughs> Fucking waste of time. This this seems like we're really scraping the bottom of the barrel here, as far as like. No. Yeah. Like you're, you're, sitting here, you're sitting here and telling me we have nothing else better to fucking make except for this. Except for some stupid fucking hick that went to jail. For the, I'm done. Fuck it. Nope. I'm not going to say anything else. There's no point. I'm wasting my breath. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. All right. Sorry. I'm back. Ooh, boy. <laughs> I can't. I'm done. I'm done. I got nothing. I Someone please continue. Right, well, so, moving on to speaking of so, not garbage, so, Yakuza is a so, thing. Yeah, so Yakuza's is a pretty good game series that I still need to launch the second game and stop playing Sins of a Solar Empire. Literally but, never heard of this game series before in my life. So when Yakuza 7 came out, everyone was like, oh man, this sucks. Like, we're never going to get this game off of anything except the PlayStation, just like Judgment, which Aiden can agree is a game I would desperately like to play on PC. Yes. Um, however, suddenly, same thing that happened, I believe, before Halo came out on PC. Apparently, over on SteamDB, they found a registration for an, a Steam slot uh, has been teased, or has was found that seems to indicate that Yakuza 7 is coming to Steam in the future. Which would be the great... Oh, my God. To awesome. play a new Yakuza Please game. Do. I don't even care that I, the uh, combat looks weird as shit. Like, I'll play that game. Hey, man, it's Yakuza except an RPG now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like Final Fantasy VII. I'll play. <laughs> Yo, kind of. It is kind of like classic mode in Final Fantasy Speaking, VII. Remake. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, so I. Uh, yeah, this is this is really not that big of a story, but man, oh man, I would love to play oh, Yakuza Seven on PC. Oh my god. I just here, here. like maybe if this does well, they bring the rest of the series finally and even judgment. <laughs> Dude, I just want I just want all of these games. Like watching that clip or, or seeing Tyler stream Final Fantasy Seven a week or two ago and seeing that dance, I'm like, man, I just want to play Yakuza. <laughs> need some Yakuza oh, bullshit in my life. I need Yakuza back in my life. Um but speaking of Final Fantasy... Yes, the superior game with the 7 in the title. Wow! Yeah, let's fucking go! Oh, 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 oh God. Do you still think that wrong? after the finale? After the <laughs> As someone who hasn't played Yakuza 7, I can't I can't say for certain. <laughs> I can't say for but certain. But despite the end... All right, so now all three of us have beaten Final Fantasy 7, so we can talk freely and spoil it for Tim. Dude, I don't give a fuck. I already listened to no, two Tim, podcasts where Tim, they spoiled the finale. Tim tried to watch the end, watch me beat the end, and like he couldn't. Oh, did they they block you from streaming? They it, right? block you, yeah. Because yeah, they, so they don't want the normies to know that Sephiroth is the final boss. <laughs> what? Ah, impossible. Oh, even though they throw him in your fucking face for like the first, even though they five hours of the game, they butchered everyone's perception of what he is. If you hadn't already played Final Fantasy VII, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So because the icing every... on the cake is that wasn't even him. So, I will say every podcast I've heard, because I listen to a g two gaming podcasts, and both of them have said, this game was so clearly not made for new f newcomers, you almost yeah. had to play the original to get this game. Yeah, this is 100%. Yeah. Made to be original. fair, now, now, to be fair, we have been yelling at them to make this fucking game for, like, almost 20 years. <laughs> yeah, the only people yelling at them to make this game are people who already played, played already. the original. Sure, but now all the new people are playing it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I think I th it's hard. It's hard to frame this in my mind, but I'm from from the perspective of a new player. I think the game did fine as far as like like nothing really goes unexplained aside from like like what I mean, the no, fuck even is everything off. outside of that. Everything yeah. else is perfectly presented to the player yeah like there's really nothing that's like oh well if you didn't play the original you have no idea what the fuck is going on um they probably should have done a little bit more with sephiroth to like no they should have done less with sephiroth 
They should have done less with Sephiroth. He, so Fair enough. Tyler and I yes, were discussing. that's what I meant. My brain, no. Okay, yes, I'm, you're correct. I'm willing to bet they originally, regardless of whether they knew Midgar was the end of this part of the game, they knew they were going to end on the highway leaving Midgar. And, you know, in my head, they totally built up that Roche was going to make an appearance during the final motorcycle sequence. It's like, psych yep. you thought. It's just like, nah, we need a glorious final boss here because this is an RPG and we're going to treat this like the end of the game and not the 25% mark. So they just slotted in a final boss 25% of the way through a story. Yes, and it was an extremely Kingdom Hearts final boss. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. all I hear. Um, I honestly, the only time honestly, we ever yeah, no more, uh, 3D was in Kingdom Hearts. I'm not entirely unconvinced that Sephiroth isn't actually Xehanort. <laughs> oh no. Oh Christ. Don't say things like that. The second the second someone started in front of the ghost, like, oh the ghost, they must be the arbiters of fate. I'm like, ah yes, the nobodies of organization thirteen. I, Here we dude, <laughs> tell me the last boss wasn't though. The last I'm like, boss? this is the same motherfucker that shows up in Destiny Island. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it, is, it is high def Destiny Island, boss. <laughs> RTX like, on, this dude. Is bullshit. Talk about Destiny and shit, man. Look, I can I can tell you the exact <laughs> moment when Nomura took over writing the entire thing. It's, dude. They're standing yes. on the highway, that huge fucking portal opens, and then suddenly Aerith suddenly knows everything suddenly and starts being like. The, I the mean, fake Aerith. ghosts are maintaining the timeline, and we need to travel to the alt. I'm like, I'm like, no, that's not Eric talking. <laughs> that's Nomura talking to me right now because I've heard this before. I've heard the when a nobody and a heartless are killed in this particular order. The original restaurant. <laughs> I'm like, no, I've heard this already. <sighs> anyway, now they're in. Just to get to the news, and then we'll get back to everyone's impressions. They're in this strange media blitz, so they're not sure what to tell anyone first. They have the audacity to make everyone think this is an alternate timeline and then say, use the phrase, the unknown adventure will continue to make you think that, oh my god, we're going to completely change the timeline. Everyone's mad. So Kitase, the original, the director of original Final Seven, just the executive producer, went on and said, look, we are not changing the core story of this game. All of the major story beats will happen, but how and w how and when they happen in the timeline I don't believe change. that. <laughs> Which, which I don't believe at all. I think this is damage control because they're like, fuck, people are pissed that this isn't an actual remake. You know, straight up, I, I don't, like, ain't think Zack's gonna be dead again. I, so, I... Spoiler, think, Zach's alive, everybody. I don't hey, think wait, he's wait, going wait, to be alive. No, I think, well, I think he is going to be dealt with in a manner that results in his death. A manner. <laughs> True. I, yes. <laughs> I personally think that like Aerith is gonna stay alive. Get the fuck and out. That's Zach one that a couple podcast alive. people. Nah, dude, said. I don't get an Aerith right. Bob at the end of part no. two. Something's very wrong. I I think they're gonna stay alive, but something bad's gonna happen because they've been very. If they kill the Tifa, game. I'm going to strangle someone. Correct. Wait, wait. What if what? what if they pull like some timeline bullshit where Aerith lives, but it turns out that's worse, so they have to kill her. I, ju I just want to clarify. If they uh, I don't want to deal point, with time you're like there that. There's so much salt, and they're not going to solve much of part three. I already, guarantee you. Aren't they already dealing with time a bunch? Isn't there already time not, travel right now? No, there's not. There's there's this one scene that may imply that they've changed something in the past, but we don't know if that's actually what that scene means. Oh, because one of my podcasts was very insistent that like things are funky with time right now. There is a theory that... so. Cloud keeps getting these premonitions of things that are going to happen later. And if you've played Original 7, you know the scenes he's flashing forward to. But these are all... I don't want to get into the deep lore of Final Fantasy 7 of why it makes sense. <laughs> but basically, the live stream's calling out to Cloud as a as someone who's been, like, bathed in Mako. He, it's, it's implied the soldiers are, like, you know, more closely connected to the live stream. I don't know. Every but, time the word li life stream life comes stream. up, oh, I know that stream. things are going so deep. <laughs> no, because the there's, there's, stream... there's always been this will of the planet thing. That was a core plot thing in original <laughs> seven. Like that's when you get to like the, the yeah. part of how the game resolves itself. It's all about what does the planet want to happen. The like, planet's the planet immune system monsters when it the believes virus. things are going wrong. Like, <laughs> the planet's a living thing in this universe. Yeah. But the fact that he's fast, the fact that he's looking, he's. 
like flashing forward everyone's like no he must be flashing back and we're in a repeating timeline and i hate that that's what everyone's <laughs> jumping to but that's probably what you're referring to is that maybe i don't know i feel like, yeah, there I, don't, was, like I don't think that's the case i thought there were implications no. that like sephiroth is fun is messing with time or something or no uh, sephiroth is messing with fate confirmed here yeah but, also, but that's also not sephiroth <laughs> i want to clarify it's not sephiroth <laughs> It's a clone. It's, it certainly no, it's, seems it's, like Sephiroth. It's Genova. Oh my god. Yo, can we talk about yeah. something good though? No. Anyway, so the last, <laughs> no, the last I want... wait, I want to finish the dumb media blitz shit and then you can say what you want to say. Okay. So in order to quell everyone's fears, this was gonna take five years to come out. Um, a lot of the directors have been like, no, we we staggered the development. We're already well into development for Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. But then an industry insider leaked that they're barely out of the planning phase. Yeah. So we're never going to get the CDM in this game. Oh, God. Now, I put together my current right. theory. For anyone who's paying attention to the end of the game, Sephiroth whispers into Cloud's ear that the world will be destroyed in seven seconds. Now, the part I want everyone to focus on there is the number seven. For anyone who's been following Final Fantasy VII this whole time will know that this is now the seventh entry in the compilation of Final Fantasy VII, the oh. seventh entry in the Final Fantasy series, <laughs> meaning that this is an intentional ploy to make the number seven the single most important thing in existence. Therefore, it's going to be a seven-part game, and it's going to launch for the PlayStation 7 in 2037. <laughs> Confirmed. Yep. Sounds about right. There's no other way. There's no other way. Maybe 2033, because then it's the 35th anniversary, and 35 is, like, divisible by 7. But oh, good no more, Lord. No more is thinking here. <laughs> he's, he's, he's on that next-level troll game. <laughs> Seventh-dimensional chess, is that what we're and, doing right yeah. now? <laughs> anyway, Tyler, what did you want to say before I interrupted you? No, you're good. It's, I'm just saying, I think we can all agree, after watching that, this boss fight, Rufus Shinra deserves his own game. So, Aiden and I were oh, talking about after so you drop sick. off of Discord on Sunday. The, like, the normal gameplay and then the one-on-one -on -one boss fights are two completely different beasts in this game. Yes. I I liked it. It was way more tactical. But, like, there were only, like, maybe three one-on-one -on -one boss fights. But they are tense. They, they do. And then they are, they are, like mini fucking uh dark souls bosses obviously not that hard but like you know they're like you know like they do the whole like oh you gotta time your blocks and you gotta be doing this if you wanna like actually do damage on them and stuff like that like that's kind of interesting may i say that coin shit makes zero sense but was rad as fuck it was fucking <laughs> awesome dude <laughs> shit i'll tell you what i mean i was hyped now imagine if i was like 13 years old again playing this game she you know 13 year olds these days don't know how good they had it <laughs> yeah they don't being able to play this quality quality uh final fantasy 7 remake that we had to wait decades for you know how many sharp edges tifa's titties had <laughs> compared to now bits, yeah we had to pretend there were Yo, just they, 20 they, bits. The they were around. only anatomically correct in battles. <laughs> yes. It was terrible. We had to use and, our and imagination. Like that one imagination. <laughs> yeah. God damn. I don't know. It sounds like we're shitting on this game, but I just want to clarify. We're only shitting on the ending because of how much I loved everything before the ending. Oh, dude. Everything yes. was fucking stellar except for the backdrops and the sky boxes. But hey, man. We don't have to talk about that. Instead, I want to talk about... The honey bee in, and how that was one of the greatest oh scenes. Oh my god! I, I, went and, I went and re-listened to the episode where I mentioned you guys. Oh, I just got to Walmart. I'm like, shit's weird, and you guys are both like, oh, you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> <laughs> were we were we wrong? Were we incorrect? No, my mind was blown. <laughs> and then the best part was because Aiden and Tim were there watching me experience this, and like, man. They couldn't see it, but they could hear that I had a smile on my face the Wait. entire time. Oh, yes. See your face, you mean, yes. Yeah, I couldn't see my face. I was going to say, because we were watching the shit out of it along with you. <laughs> yeah. I was yeah. enjoying it. Tyler was upset that it was out of rhythm, though. 
Yeah, that's my problem. So I play this one game, everybody, called uh, Hatsune Miku Project Diva. Hell yeah. And it's just <laughs> Real like, life hours. Who's up? Who's up? The fucking Hatsune Miku. That's what. And it was structured just like that game. So I'm like, oh, that's fucking awesome. I rock these. I mean, granted, I like, I think I only missed like one note during that whole thing. But I was like, as a person who used to play an instrument, uh, and like be into music and all that and stuff, and then playing music and rhythm games for even longer, it fucked me up that it wasn't in time with the song. We still need to set up Guitar Hero for you and Val to play sometime. Does she really want the sauce, though? No, I mean, she'll lose if you guys play on the same difficulty, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, I don't want to do that. But it'd her. still be fun. Tyra, it would be like be the fun. only video game the two of you could play together, though. I just don't want to be that guy. I've been in the situation before. I mean, I, I don't think bad. she'd be upset, though. Maybe not. I don't know. She, she's too kind-hearted to be like, oh, you know, whatever, Tyler. Look, Bye. every every shonen protagonist needs to get completely bodied right before their training arc. So that way they know where they need to be to defeat. Dude, it's way too late to get good okay. at Guitar Hero now. No one cares about it anymore. <laughs> can't pick up chicks on expert anymore actually <laughs> apparently there was a story about a lizzo thing and rock band did you guys hear oh, about yeah. this yeah it's not on the yeah, docket oh um, there's a there's Freeman, a word why don't you, you can't say yeah a word that only tyler is uh, allowed to say in one of her it. songs and they put it in the rock band version and yeah, so they, they had to wait, wait, time out wait wait wait, wait. Something Rock about, Band is still happening? Yes, it's still yes. getting updates. And apparently uh, there was a Lizzo song called like Juice or something. I don't know. I don't okay. listen to Lizzo. Um, but there's, she uses that word in the song. And they left okay. it in the Rock Band version. The soft and then A they, or the informal R? Um, hold informal on. R Knowing R. her, probably the informal R. Um, Let's find out. But either way, they pulled it because people couldn't – or did finish the song and both of those scenarios can be bad <laughs> for the vocals yo man either it's all okay or it's none of it's okay well right? there you go they pulled it down so it's not okay <laughs> i guess not um according to genius.com it's a it's a soft a it's a soft a <laughs> it's a soft a not a formal hard r i don't Point see is. the problem point I'll is people don't like being told they have to say that word in order to 100 percent the song that's Listen, true just because y'all want just because the white guilt okay before and tell us says anything else we're gonna fly I, back to hey, japan man, where this whoa. isn't an issue <laughs> fine don't fly have your white guilt freeman take us <laughs> to japan please god i wish i could get excited for the weeb shit this this used to be literally a third of our podcast and now <laughs> there's just there's literally nothing there's so little anime that we're down to five. There are five shows now that have been confirmed that they completed their production and will go to the end. And a show that I've been talking about a lot is not on this list anymore. So the five, I left one out because I literally don't know what it is and it's not worth watching. <laughs> but three, there are only three on this list. Point is, the three that matter, um, a sentence of a bookworm, uh, reincarnate as a villainous, all roots lead to doom, and then sing yesterday for me are three of the five shows on this list that have finished their production, they are going to air to completion. No additional work is even needed, which is great because I was thinking of watching, well, I'm already watching Bookman. I was thinking of watching those two, but I wanted to know they were going to air to completion. Um, notably, Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 2, which has been touted as being done for months, changed their status from <laughs> done to not yet finished. Amazing. So they, they're, they've been misleading us. No, we may have that last episode delayed months on end until they can record some voice line for it is what's the most likely scenario. Um, but Bob the one Bob. show I was, I was actually looking to pick up and I'm probably going to hold on it now is a show called Princess Connect Redive. I wasn't originally going to watch it until I found out it's a comedy and it's from the director of Konosuba. So I kind of want to give it a shot just because... He's got a good oh, track record, no, super. but it's not on the list of shows that are going to air to completion. So I'm kind of concerned. Whoops. Yeah. Um, but that's it. Your anime season is five shows worth watching and seven shows that a, we don't know if they're going to complete and B they're, they're all pretty bad. So well, outside Kaguya is apparently good. Well, no, no, no. Like outside of the ones on this list I'm talking about, like well, anything I, I didn't, 
mentioned right now is not regarded as a but good. I thought anime. you just said the five on the list are going to completion and Kaguya yeah, but just I, I, I meant not of not sh- any show that I haven't brought up in the last five minutes by name. Okay, gotcha. Because there are still a couple others airing this season. Gotcha. Are widely regarded as bad at the moment. Do not watch them. Thankfully, anyway, speaking of still good. Speaking of shows you can't watch anymore, um, Funimation is <laughs> it's going to start dealing with an issue that NBC Universal. They are starting to corral the rights to any digital media they may own. So when they license out the series Drifters to Funimation for their simul dubbing service, um, Funimation only had the stream rights, I guess, until the current year. And now they've lost the stream rights for both the subversion and the dub that they produced. Uh, as Incredible. of now, it's still available on Hulu in both, but it's starting to sound a lot like NBC is like, you know, Netflix has anime. Peacock needs anime. Yo so, ho, uh, like, yo ho. Yeah, it sounds like they want to fracture the industry even more and just make it worse and worse and just yeah, NBC We're ruining life. everything again. Drifters, Drifters was a good show. The problem with Drifters was they prematurely confirmed a season two that never happened, and then also confirmed an OVA episode that also didn't happen. <laughs> and it was it, w- it would have been great. It was from the. I want to say the writer of Helsing did this. Ooh. So it was a decent show. It just, it desperately needed a season two. Um, And then on to actual weeb news. So I forget who published. Real quick, Freeman, can I just say at the top of our anime right now is a quick look at spring 2020. Yeah, I looked through the chart today. um, Are most of these shows not happening? Uh, most of them have not confirmed they've finished production, so we'll most Sick. likely have a delay somewhere in the middle. Because this seems like a massive lie. That... <laughs> what? Just this. It's like, here's what to watch spring 2020. If I, we mean yeah. maybe another week or two. So at the top, he he put an indicator there where there's like a flag. If it's confirmed, all episodes have, are done. Oh, I produced. see it. Okay. So you can look and see on the list which ones are definitely going to air to completion. He has Cause, like, Tower of already... God is probably. Do you think that'll finish? I, I, I mean, Crunchyroll. I don't know. Like, Crunchyroll isn't part of this weird ass crunch Japanese culture where, like, since I don't know who the broadcasting partner is for it in Japan, but since Crunchyroll is like one of the three companies that was on the planning board for it, I can't imagine they were like very restricted with like Holy time slots and they had to commit to a season. So, so many of these shows are not marked as complete or even probably complete. Like Jeez. I said, no one like it's rare. For ones for companies to do this, and no one wants to like mention that they're fucked after. after, after <gasps> oh my god, the third highest thing on our anime is a Gundam wing clip. This is amazing. <laughs> oh, the one where he's <laughs> like, I'll, I'll kill, kill you. you. I'm gonna kill you, <laughs> dude. I love that clip. I haven't even seen Gundam wing, and I know exactly what you're talking about. It's so good. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to distract. Anyway, the real the real news to come out of uh, anime news this week is there was a big report about what happened last year in the anime industry. Uh, And a couple key takeaways are this. One is, I think foreign consumption is now up to like 50% of revenue for all anime. So now they have to acknowledge foreign markets. And when it comes to acknowledging foreign markets, the big elephant in the room is China. In the last year, major anime entities have been blocked in China due to like, you know, policies, whatever. One of the biggest ones, My Hero Academia, has officially been in China due to the issue around one of those characters being named after or similar to one of the Japanese scientists who... How do I put it? Committed atrocities in China during World War II. Regardless, series that are available in China now account for like 30% of all international anime revenue. So that's like 15% of what every, every anime makes is now just Chinese revenue. Um, on top of that, they did address the fact that Japan's not the only place that anime comes from anymore. So Chinese animation news have really shot up in the last five, six years. Now there's like, there's not really their own version of Food Wars that came out. It wasn't that great. I don't recommend watching. But point is, they're more than capable of producing their own anime. And then one interesting thing is they brought up that Into the Spider-Verse was like what they view as the first Western attempt to make a cartoon not for kids. And they called that one out by name. Hmm. Which I thought was interesting. Um, they also addressed like Castlevania sort of being anime too. But point is, they're aware that there are now other countries capable of doing what they do. And they, they're concerned they may not hold the market on anime if everyone else catches up. Which I think is pretty interesting. Because like up until now, it's like there's there is no alternative to anime. Like you have Avatar the Last Airbender. That was it for the longest time. Wait, is that anime? That's not anime. 
So it's not, but why are we going to start this? On by a studio. <laughs> We're going to start. We completed. can start this conversation. The studio Mirror worked for Madhouse for a while. So a studio that did anime also did Avatar, or at least part of Korra. Oh my God. No, we can't. So. This is such a rabbit hole. There's like a whole discussion. But to put it this way Japan is concerned that non Japanese animation is going to kill anime. I Which mean, I think just is, make what? better shit that's not isekai, duh. But I'm like only a quarter joking. But how am I going to pander to my established audience? <laughs> Honestly, the I I seriously think the isekai shit is getting tired. But like, the I don't know that, if they're really scared, then make better shit. The thing is, the Chinese love that stuff, and that's thirty percent of the revenue right there. But more importantly, they may start censoring certain things to make sure their shows are able to get made available in china no, no, no. We'll anyway see. i can tell everyone's not too enthusiastic about this news so i'll wrap it here it's that's okay it it's sure. just it's it's hard it's just tough man china china's been a hot button topic and it will be for the rest of time until our no, I actually forget I'm not going to make that joke. Actually, it'll stop oh, right now because we're going to talk talk about what we played and watched while this corona. Other than, Final, I... other than Final Fantasy VII. Freem, why don't you tell everyone what game you decided to start replaying? So, you know, <laughs> it, might come as, it might come as a shocker to some people, but to others, you might see it coming. <laughs> because I started playing Persona 5 Royal. Because... I'm a sucker, and I just have to go back to the waifus, and I like playing games I've already played before. But I gotta say, I'm only like 10 hours into this game, and they've done a lot to like really improve it. Like I was telling Tim before we started, like you know how you play, yeah, like, you use that joke too with the music and everything. Yes, yeah, because I wrote it for the podcast, but I had a perfect opportunity to use the joke on you earlier. Anyway, you ever play like Pokemon Platinum or something, and like there's very minor tweaks throughout the game, but they're they're all pretty small things, but they generally add to a better experience. Yes. Like, I feel like I'm running into one of those, like, every 30 minutes in Persona 5. It's something very minor they tweak that just feels better than the original. So, I'm thoroughly enjoying this, and I'm not even remotely regretting that I'm going to spend 120 hours playing this game. Again. Yes. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the meme of the guy throwing the car in reverse. It's like Freeman's driving away with Persona 5, and then it's like, but Persona 5 Royal just came out, and Freeman throws it in reverse and goes back again. <laughs> Look, it's... I Originally, I had, like, zero interest. And then my brother, who's now quarantined at home my parents' house, he needs something to do because he's bored out of his mind. So we he just got a stimulus check, and of course, he's like, I want a PS4. So I found one nearby. Yeah. His, his full intent was just to play Persona 5. He's like, that'll keep me distracted for a good chunk of this quarantine. So I was watching him play for a bit, and then I was like, all right, you know, it's a little different. And then he gets to the first dungeon. I step out for like 20 minutes. I come back in. He's like, hey, I thought this game was Persona 5. I'm like, yeah, why? He's like, because it looks like it's Gun Gale Online. He pulls out the gun for all of his characters, just unloads his ammo. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? That's limited. And he looks at me, not anymore. It's not. <laughs> and I sat there like, <laughs> what? what? The hell? And like, it was just such a minor change that now changes how you can play battles in this game. I'm like, oh, God, I need to try this. And suddenly it awoke in me. It was like, I need to play all of Persona 5 again. I need to see what else they did. And so far, it's pretty good. And then from what I've gotten spoiled, I know the new shit is going to be fire when I get to it. Oh, boy. So I'm very excited. That'll, that'll be... Much like last time, this is going to be my status for the next, like, three to four months. Amazing. Oh, it's it's like the first 50 episodes of the podcast. Guess who's back? Again. That's back right. again. <laughs> Same old game. Yeah. We're from like zero to Damn. fifty an hour, and you're like one hundred to one fifty is gonna hey, be the same thing. Hey, you shouldn't be fronting because you watch the you watch the Office all the time. No, I th okay. <laughs> no joke. Haven't Damn watched a minute jab. of it since I came back since I've been quarantining. Yo, but was I wrong though? No, but like throwing on an Office episode to I, Tyler. I know people who rewatch episodes just as noise every single day. Yeah, we we know the same person, Tim. I understand. I wasn't actually talking about her. You sure? <laughs> yes. Because I not think you secretly do were. I'm not saying she doesn't do it, but I am not talking about her. Oh, okay. Um, but regardless, Tyler, I'm not. I swear, you can think I am. <laughs> I swear. Um, 
No, but uh, yeah, I just look. I don't rewatch it that much. Sometimes it's nice to have noise. Actively playing a game for another hundred hours is not the same thing. You say actively, but I'm playing like. How do I put this? So at the end of Dragon Ball Super, Goku unlocks an ability called Ultra Instinct, where he just acts without thinking. That is how I play Persona 5. It's just my brain is hardwired directly to the controller. I know what I'm doing. So I'm mostly just sleeping and playing Persona 5. It's the best way to describe what I'm doing. Aren't, aren't you watching anime? Ironically enough, no, I'm not. So <laughs> rushing through Final Fantasy 7 and then playing Persona 5 has consumed all my attention right now. Um, I, I like double checked what I watched since last week, and I think it was just I watched like the hypest episode of Symphogear Gear possible, and then I caught up a little more on B Stars. I think that was all I watched this week. A little more of Dragon Ball Super. I'm now I can now firmly say Dragon Ball Super is garbage. Do not watch it. <laughs> like um, I got to the second of three top hype moments, and I was like, "This is bull! Like this is actual bullshit! What's going on moment? right now?" So. All minor spoilers for Dragon Ball Super. Goku Who goes cares? Ultra Instinct. He gets the shit kicked out of him, and now he's like lying on the ground, unable to fight. Freezes like here's enough energy to walk around. Don't get eliminated for the rest of the tournament. <laughs> so naturally, Goku's like, oh well, you know, if I go fight people, maybe that'll help me regain my strength. I'm like, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> so the two Saiyan girls come up and they're like, we want to fight you. He's like, hmm, maybe if I fight with you, I'll get some of my strength back, which. I don't, so they stretch this fight out for three episodes where he keeps like, he's like, huh, you guys are stronger than I thought. It allowed me to be stronger than I thought. And he gradually goes through all the Super Saiyan levels till so he goes Super Saiyan Blue, then Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken, and then they fuse and kick his ass. And then his solution is, I guess I just need to overcome my limit and go Ultra Instinct again. And then everyone in the audience <laughs> is like, we didn't even think he'd be able to do it once, let alone twice now. And they use literally the exact same progression for how he did it in the fight he just got bodied in thank you so it's like i'm not i'm like i'm not shocked he did this you literally just did this plot line six episodes ago <laughs> incredible Sounds retarded but everyone told me this was going to be hype and i'm disappointed damn. damn get fucking destroyed i know right i wasted 115 episodes and i still have to watch 16 more of them <laughs> you made it through a lot though like, there was one moment that got me excited and everything else after that has just been a disappointment. Um, Aiden, do you have anything to say about this? Uh, oh, what, like, saying what we watched? Oh, no, no, I wasn't. Super. Aiden, did you watch Dragon Ball Super or you just no, played the I game? I didn't watch Super. Oh, no, I watched Super. I like oh. Super. Oh. oh. I apologize if I offend you with my opinions, but... No, 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 no it's fine. Alone. They're completely valid opinions. Gotcha. Completely valid. Uh... The entire last arc of Super it, it is full of utter garbage. <laughs> so it's it was, like it was the best part of Super. <laughs> uh the parts in it are the best parts of Super. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. It also has some of the worsts too. Uh, and honestly, person. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I like half watched most of that arc. <laughs> like I had it playing in the background and I would glance over to it every once in a while but like I honestly didn't watch most of that Dude, I don't blame you 70% of this tournament is filler fights yeah remember this tournament that takes place over 40 fucking episodes or some shit like that <laughs> is also only 48 minutes long that's the icing on the cake. Like everyone loves to meme about the like Namek's gonna explode in five minutes, but like, <laughs> the, like they're they're keeping track loosely. Like every episode, is, there's only twenty seven minutes remaining in the tournament of power. But it's like, it's been forty episodes. It's been literally twenty hours of watching this, and the guys like there's still eight minutes left in the tournament. Sounds fucking stupid. Someone did do a super cut because it's a bunch of different fights. They tried to cut it together into a loose timeline of how everyone fought everyone else in 48 minutes. So, <laughs> oh, what a... at least it makes some like sense internally. Yeah, I, I don't know. I really, I really liked um, a lot of Super, uh, even though I understand why people probably don't. Oh, I, I love uh, the build up for the Goku Black arc. I didn't like the resolution in the slightest, but yeah. That really, anytime, honestly, anytime Frieza's on screen, I'm <laughs> smiling. Frieza is the best part of Dragon Ball Super. 
And I feel uh, so weird saying that. Yeah, he is one of the best main characters. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's it's pretty weird. Also, they did they did our boy Yamcha dirty. Yeah, they did. Uh even though he's the best character in Dragon Ball Fighters, they were like, No no no, Yamcha. Wait, is Yamcha actually the best character? He he is S tier in Dragon Ball Fighter. Holy he shit! Yeah, he's one of the best characters in that game. He is fantastic. He's got amazing pressure, like superb mix-ups. Fucking mm, fantastic. <laughs> but like everything else, he's complete trash. Are there any references to the Yamcha in the crater shot? Absolutely. Okay, good. I Absolutely. just checking. It, uh, there is a dramatic finish between Nappa and Yamcha with that and actually if yamcha <laughs> does it to napa napa's the one in the crater oh hell yeah yep oh fuck we forgot to talk about the evo online stuff that came out in the smash tournament dude why did it have to be this year there's there's no good online for marvel's capcom 2 we can't talk about it it's too much evo's gonna no. be terrible because it's all online and every game is bad internet so every game is bad yeah evo's basically um, canceled period Aiden, did you play anything or watch anything? Freeman, I'm guessing you're uh, done since it was just... Yes, I'm done. I'm, I'm done venting about Dragon Ball Super. So, I started my my pre-watch of Vinland Saga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, and I will I'll probably, like I'll probably language, yeah. watch that. I'll watch that before, uh, before I go to bed tonight. Because um, it did look very interesting to me. And I like Vikings a lot. They're pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, uh, I, I, uh, I got hit with the old, uh, I need to play World of Warcraft again. Oh. <laughs> so I am now playing World of Warcraft again and I hate myself for it. Do you have a guild or are you just running around? Uh, yeah, we, we have a guild on, uh, Laughing Skull and, uh, everybody's, uh, getting ready for sh the old Shadowlands. It's it's gonna be great. It's looking it's looking pretty good, uh, compared to what we're at right now. So, cautiously optimistic that this is a good expansion and they make the game fun again. Fingers crossed. Yep. <clears throat> uh, other than that, um, pretty much just playing Call of Duty. Uh, I picked up Black Mesa on Steam, so I'm probably oh, gonna play through that again. Wonder. Yeah, Half Life One. Um, I've pretty much all but stopped playing Final Fantasy X again because I just can't. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> wow. I you uh, did it. I try. I tried. I tried again, and I just can't. I can't get into ten. I tried so hard. But uh, hey, man, I'm looking final. I'm looking forward to that Final Fantasy sixteen at some point. <laughs> oh Lord. When, whenever whenever we get that after we get the fucking seven iterations of Final Fantasy 7 and the 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 remake of the Dirge of Cerberus and whatever else they want to fucking People are actually out here claiming they want a remake of Crisis Core. I mean if they were going to remake anything <laughs> they ain't like, gonna, they ain't Of course go. not. Of course not. But still Maybe um, in 20 years when the 7 remake finishes, though. Trust yeah. me when I say this. You don't need to see the plot line of Crisis Core. <laughs> I was like, you you don't need to. But Zack is just a, a better cloud, though. Zack is the only good part of Crisis Core. Listen, all you gotta maybe, see is the scene which they showed at the end of Final Fantasy 7. Freedom, the price is steep, and then you cry, and that's it. That's Crisis Core. Living yeah, except he dies in Crisis Core. Shh. <laughs> oh, me. sorry. Spoilers. In case we didn't know that. Spoilers for the Final Fantasy VII remake coming in. <laughs> Ironically enough, it might not be a spoiler for the Final Fantasy VII remake. It might not be a spoiler. Isn't it we great? Don't know. Thank goodness Nomura is here to save Final Fantasy VII. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh, I to make this a good game Aerith like Kingdom Hearts. Until, uh, I, I think they'll keep Aerith around until part three. 
Yeah, a lot of people are speculating that they're not going to get to the Temple of the Ancients in part two. So, uh, I don't, I don't think so. I think they're not to rearrange. I did not want us to go new, back yeah, to yeah, Final Fantasy VII. Seven. Original game, Jesus. Why are we back on Final Fantasy again? Uh, Why are we here just to suffer? <laughs> <laughs> we still yeah. haven't finished what the hell we were talking about. What we but played. Yeah, I'm. Game. Uh, that that's pretty much it. Finland Saga and. I'm gonna watch that tonight. And, and then, wow, uh, wow, wow, and Coral on duty. Tyler. Coral on duty. Yeah. Oh, I'm wor- I'm almost done with my gold SMGs too. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> nice. Fucking loser. Who even? Hey. I'm um, gonna get an Obsidian Riot Shield. Oh my god. <laughs> Tyler, loser. please save us. Go. <laughs> I'm still playing Disco Elysium. I really like that game. Um. Well, oh, I'm almost done with uh, Ozark. As far as the stuff I'm watching, I'm watching some normie shit. Uh, still watching Tower of God pretty regularly. Um, for however much longer that goes. For however much longer that hopefully, goes. Hopefully for seven more weeks. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm still enjoying it so far. Um, like, I, I don't know. I'm not, for some reason, like I said this last week, I'm not too concerned about not knowing shit. It's fine. Um, it's something different, and I'm interested. Um, Call of Duty, because I'm a normie. Uh, fuck, what else am I... I feel like I'm missing something here. Oh, I'm, like, in the final stretch, finally. Finally. Of the Dark Tower. Ooh. Oh, nice. Yeah. God, I haven't read a book since I came back to New Jersey. Look. That's fine. And then I'm going to pick up the... Even though I told myself I wasn't going to pick up another like long-ass yes, series. Yes, you did. I, I did. Um, it's because, like, I don't know, my friend's been bugging me literally for years since I left Arizona to, like, read it. And I feel obligated that I need to at least read the first book. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, you have um, not named the series yet. <clears throat> huh? Oh, the Stormlight Archives. By Brandon Sanderson. I know his name. I don't know the books. Yeah, that's his like flagship series. His like he's friend. written a lot of books, like a lot of shit. But someday I'll get you to like, read Red Rising. What? One of these days. I pro- I promise. I actually I download. Tyler, that, look, actually. I'm not. I'm not coming at you. I'm. I'm literally saying someday I, I'll get you to. There. I know. I have it though. I know. Um, I like I said. I downloaded it, so it's on my list. I did put it on my Kindle. Um, oh, and I'm about to finish um, Grave Peril uh, for Dresden Files, the audiobook. Oh, nice. So, Probably like I said, to I, it like, all it's, just in time. Yeah, right. I'm hopefully to do it just in time for the two the so, two books this year. Thank the Lord. Wait. So, when the next book comes out, are you going to drop everything to read that, like I am? Yes. Okay. Cool. I'm 100% dropping everything I'm reading. It, cause I, so I'm gonna the be week it comes out, the next week podcast will have read the entire book and talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to burn through that book like like nothing. I, I burned through that short stories book in yep. like a week. So that I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that stuff this year. So even though some things are getting fucked up, there's still things that I can look forward to this year. Thank God. Um, and non game related or watching news but uh i guess it's kind of cool and you can yell at me all you want tim but i don't give a fuck oh uh i decided to spend money on i don't even know did i tell you that i spent money on like gun parts to make a Ty, you sent the samurai picture edge? oh we saw the picture you, you sent. sent the picture to everybody no not that wait what no i bought more stuff oh uh, leslie mentioned Uh-oh. but i didn't know what how much Oh, it was like, I think it's like so far 200 bucks on parts. I need to spend like 20 more dollars, but basically I'm making a uh, replica build of the Samurai Edge uh, from Resident Evil, uh, the Resident Evil games. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> you're like, are oh, you motherfuckers? But man, this is my Look, hobby. you're earning a lot of money with your hazard pay and shit that you and Aiden are getting. That's I was like, don't, don't flame me. I, look. It's really not oh, that much. No, no, no. Look. I'm wait really? What do you mean? This is a lot. Tyler for was me. freaking out. Yeah, man. I don't. I don't never get this much money. Damn. Nah, well, fair enough. Well, I, no. My <laughs> thing is always just like 
not to talk about guns, but like I've thought about like maybe someday getting like a pistol or something, but I I just can't get into culture for something like that. You I'm just not that in that time. mindset. You don't need to be a part of the culture to like have one. Yeah, you can be a normal. No, 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 no. I'm saying I, I'm not saying I would be to have one. Tyler's talking about getting parts and building one. That oh, is not yeah. something I'd be like Man, I could oh, buy yeah, so many like video shit. games and shit, like, and I'll actually use them instead of just going to the range and shooting another gun. <laughs> Look, is the difference mean, between a PC gamer and a PC building enthusiast? Uh, that yeah, sure, much. but like, and I'm my gonna job use... has completely killed my enthusiasm for making PCs anymore. So I gotta <laughs> go to fair. something else. <laughs> I gotta build something with these hands. Like and plus, like honestly, like I've uh, this is something I have wanted for a very long time. No, I know that's why I'm not like, I'm not freaking out about it. I just well, can't be okay. like, yeah, I'm gonna drop two hundred bucks on gun parts to build a gun. Well, I'd yeah, no, like, it's it's just one of those things where it's like, it's I'd be like, like with magic anything. card. <laughs> it's like man, no, for real, that's how it is. It's like because you want, like, for example, like you buy. Uh, you want different art for different cards. It's literally the same thing. That's fair. for an aesthetic. <laughs> my aesthetic. My aesthetic. Tell you, you like, got anything I, else? Like, that's gonna... the way I see it. Like people don't see it that way. I guess. No, it's a lot okay. of people think We're... I'm fucking nuts. <laughs> I mean, it's I, true. Tyler, I lived in well, Ohio. You're not nuts. Yeah, I know. But I know that's how people think I am. But it's okay. It's my hobby. Uh. I'm having fun with it. I think it's super cool, and I like to share that stuff with uh, other people, especially who are like people who are into like Resident Evil now. So like, I told my buddy about. It, he's like, "Yo, that's fucking cool," because we grew up playing Resident Evil together. Nice. So, Is there anything um, else, Tyler? We want to try to keep this under two hours, even though we keep failing to do that. Yeah, we do. Um, no, that's it. I got nothing else. I'll be real quick. Uh, gaming is literally three things. I've been playing Mario Kart with Val's sisters. Uh, I've been playing Sins of a Solar Empire, mostly the Thrawn's Revenge mod for funsies when I'm not doing work during work hours. And I've been playing Civ Four like almost every single night with Alvin and Ed. They are just in such a rabid gaming mode for the first time <laughs> in like 10 years. Um, we even played SWAT 4 a little bit which was also fun because they both wanted to shoot her randomly. <laughs> um, boy, oh boy, is Alvin another Tyler where it's just called go in and just kill everything. Um, freeze, get on the ground. Pop, pop, pop. No, pop, pop, more, pop. Like, more like pop, 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 freeze, get on the ground. <laughs> freeze, on, <laughs> hands in the air. <laughs> um, watching, uh, I surprised Val by catching up to RE0 and we're chugging along real slow. I know you guys love that show, but man, I, there's moments where I think it's great, and then there's moments where I'm like, man, the show wants me to fucking stop watching the show. <laughs> um, but uh, I also used that as an excuse to have me and Val start watching Isekai Quartet, which is such a dumb, fun, good it's time. A grand payoff for all these shows, and it ends all up these being shows, the derpiest fucking comedy. It's come out of anime. No, honestly, honestly. I wonder if like every single writer for these shows and and manga and everything worked on this together because the characterizations are so spot on. Like it's just fun seeing the the like characters like they, I already mentioned this too, but like season two they start taking characters from the different franchise, having them hang out more. So there's a lot right. more intermixing of characters that you don't get from their like respective series, which is like by far the best part of this crossover. Like it's dumb, but when you see Ainz and Tanya sitting down and they're both like, "Ah, I was reincarnated from a middle a middle aged Japanese man." Oh, hell yes. <laughs> and they're both. It's dude, that shit just cracks me up. I I can't help but laugh and grin my way through every single episode of Isekai Quartet. And you really don't need to know more than, like, we're at the point where we've watched all of Overlord, all of Konosuba one episode of tanya that you showed us and uh, realistically you need to watch like the first three of tanya to know who everyone is but yeah but it doesn't not, matter they're all military me. people they're they're pretty i will say you need to have watched the first arc of konosuba also yes the, the really... first season of this relies heavily on konosuba yeah you you need to watch through the uh manor arc 
in Konosuba, which is what we're right where I had Val had ended, and I was like, "What oh, you mean Rezero? We start Rezero. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Konosuba. I feel like if you watch, as long as you know all the character, like you get to the point where you know all the characters in Konosuba, you're fine. You don't need to watch all of it. All you need to know is like <laughs> what darkness is into and why Ak was so annoying. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like Which watching... I think by episode episode three of Konosuba, you've met everyone. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So useless. It's oh, it's so funny. Like Ein's, like they're walking down the street, or uh, all of the Overlord characters walking down the street, and Aqua goes, "Hey, it's an undead. Turn undead." And Ein's is like, "Holy shit, that hurt a lot." And then Koz- <laughs> Kazuma just punches her in the head and drags her away, and she's crying. And Ein's just goes, "Man, the power balance is really fucked up here." <laughs> <laughs> If a regular human could punch a god, um, yeah, it's it's just it's just fun, easy, it's it's easy fun, it's great, um, but yeah, that's watching a lot of YouTube shit, and yeah, definitely emphasis on the shit. Wow, you don't even know what I'm watching. <laughs> Ouch, Jesus, <laughs> I know it's shit. <laughs> um, yeah, that's basically it. I really need to start playing Yakuza too. I feel like every day I'm like, don't boot up Sins and play another game. Just just don't get into it. Just start playing Yakuza 2. And I'm like, ah, but Sins is so easy to just not pay attention to. <laughs> um, but hopefully by next week I'll start Yakuza. But speaking of next week, we're going to end it here. So until next time, thank you all so much for listening. My name is Tempedia. I'm Friedman. Just Tyler. I wasn't here for the beginning, so it doesn't feel right. <laughs> okay, an unknown pause. <laughs> we'll uh, take us out. Thanks, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs>